more like this and that is everything is connected from that point value from where everything started so this point value from where the multiplication started everything you are made up of bone muscles tissues tendons ligaments seven tissues remember the name names of the seven tissues sanskrit names rasa, rasa. rakta mansa meda asti majja and shukra okay so seven tissues what you are made up of the organ the organ systems you are made up of you started your journey from here to there from the first breath to everything else you are nourishing your body through food air and water and you are creating your body and some of these unwanted cells are dead and they are thrown out and some of the new cells are created you are keeping yourself busy from age 1 or 0 to maybe 100 is that correct as you are keeping yourself alive for those 100 years what you are doing is you are actually ingesting food air and water many times in a very involuntary unconscious way do you have to remind yourself to breathe it happens all the time isn't it it happens there is a generation that you are thirsty you want to drink water there is a sensation of hunger what happens uh, that you need to eat food but whatever happens whether you live in the jungles of africa or whether you live in a skyscraper in manhattan or wherever you live this thing is going to go on constantly and as you are leading your life from 0 to 100 what's happening is you are creating your body from all the food you are ingesting but as you are ingesting there is a constant faculty of mind and the sensory organs and the information that you are ingesting through your mind so the the life force which is going to keep this alive the first thing which enters the worm here in this single cell is the force of life that life force is called as atma or spirit or soul or self that soul self spirit atma is going to carry itself all these time it is going to witness how your mind is working and what you are thinking it is also going to witness how your body is behaving and how it is experiencing and it is actually watching the journey of your mind and body together all along the moment this guy leaves your body the mind is still there the sensory faculties are still there the body whatever you created in these 100 years 150 pounds is still buried in the casket there so the body is still there but the driver of that vehicle has left the body is that correct the driver of that vehicle has left the body when we say that driver is this life force or atma or spirit or soul or self it is it is the combination of that life force allowing your mind and body to integrate together and function as a living entity the moment this disappears it becomes a non living entity to a certain extent is that correct because you still have your eyes ears everything when you are 3 feet under okay so when you are you are stuck with your physical form of body and there is no life left in that you are dead that's what we call it so while we are alive and while we are trying to build our body on one thing and while we are experiencing our mind on the other thing they should not be two parallel tracks which are going on in life but we are trying to intersect both of them in everyday basis where you are bringing the spiritual component in the force of life in and you align yourself with that higher state of consciousness and what it does is when you align yourself with the higher state of consciousness which is soul spirit soul, self and atma then you transcend the limitations of your mind and you transcend the limitations of your body that's what you have done 
that's what you have done. You have transcended the limitations of your mind telling you that how wonderful kombucha is for me and why I have to do it as a part of my everyday routine. And you have transcended that limitation because from here, by regulating your mind, you are actually going to experience that, oh, my, my body may not need it. I was just thinking that, yeah, without chocolate I cannot live, but may not be right. So every time you go through an experience, <clears throat> good, bad, positive, negative experience in your life, and you start aligning yourself with a degree of detachment and witnessing to your soul, self, spirit, atma, then the expression what you're looking at in your life is going to be very different. Yes. Um, this, this is, as you're saying, this, it reminds me that I went down to San Francisco once to go to a, a play on Market Street and we had time to spare and we parked about two miles away so I had to walk towards the theater and I was engaged by three or four individuals that were homeless on the street. I had never seen this before. There was literally no one there in their eyes. I, I had never seen that before. I mean there was a body there, there was animal instinct moving towards me, wanting something from me, but when I looked in their eyes, and this happened to three different individuals, I was like, God, there's no one home. There's absolutely no one there. They have vacated the premises. And I, I don't see that in the people I walk around with, like day to day and interact with. There's always, I feel like when I'm looking at them, there. but I had never seen that before and it was just shocking to me. I was like, oh my God, there's no one home here anymore. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. That's, that, that is scary. Yeah. I have a question about the attachment to something, to witness something, what is it, um, like potential to change you, like change your life. Could the certain experience be somehow like completely you know you don't want to change your life you want to live like everybody else have the certain experience but still if you have certain experience which you have could you somehow like put it away by meditation just disappear or postpone the experience well the key is not to really separate ourselves from the life okay we are here to enjoy life the purpose of life human life is to be here to fulfill the desires of your senses, to take care of your body to the best of your ability and enjoy life. There is no other way from, from that. There is no reason for us to suffer. But we don't have to really enjoy life in a zombie manner. We have to enjoy life in a manner in which we are taking care of our mind so that it is not driving us but we are in the driving force of how we generate thoughts or how we think or how we make choices and what it does to our physiological existence. So it is just changing your alignment where you are a mindful person. Is that right? You are a mindful person and I do this whole weight loss things all around the country now and uh, it is a mindful eating habit. The moment you look at your plate that this is going, what is going to become your body, you should be very mindful of it. Okay, you can't really say that I can eat a, a bag of chips and I, it's okay that if it becomes a part of my body. You look at it and you, you mindfully say that I don't want this to become a part of my body and I do it differently. Or you look at a stressful situation and you mindfully allow yourself to look at something else which is brighter in that problematic situation and nourish your body from that, not take that negativity in your so in, in a mindful manner, you are aligning yourself with a spiritual experience every little time. So you are constantly awake and connected with that spirit. And that is what we call it as a spiritual experience. Health is a byproduct of enlightenment. Health is a byproduct of enlightenment. It happens automatically. You don't have to really do anything. You just have to be aware and do things properly whether you are in control of your senses or you are taking it for a ride. Or you are actually doing things which are allowing for you to experience the greater reality of life. And be connected with a degree of selfless detachment. You actually allow yourself. And there are so many ways people do that. Okay, like, like you're attached to your hair a lot. Oh, I love my hair and this and that. You shave your head and see what it does. How many, how many places that you know that even women, uh, and there is a whole um, 
wonderful temple in southern part of India where long flowing hair all the way to their ankles, they go and shed their hair completely shaven. Have you seen those photos, pictures yet? You should look it up. And yeah, YouTube it. and <laughs> what was that? India redid it. Yeah. She, the singer, she cut off all her hair too. Yeah, so there's, there's a whole uh, segment of, of something what you're so attached to in your life, okay, uh, that what it does. Uh, there's a patient of mine who, who said that, uh, uh, I said, if you want to really do something, uh, what can you do? And she said, I came up with something which I'm so attached to and I'm going to try it for a month and see what it does. And she said, for one month, I'm not going to use any kind of makeup on me any kind of makeup, nothing for my eyes, nothing for my hair, nothing. It just clean, simple things with whatever water. I'll wash my face, I'll wash my hair, but nothing I will be using for that. And I will see what it really feels my body without any kind of crutches, which I'm supporting. No moisturizers, no cosmetic, no lotions, nothing. I just want to experience the rawness of my body without using anything else. And she came back after a month, she says, it's a life transforming experience. It was as if that every time I looked at the mirror, I was a different person I was looking at. I'm so used to beautifying myself all the time that it was very different that many times I didn't even recognize that this is me. I couldn't even feel that these are my eyes or these are my hair or this is my skin or anything like that. So. I'm just telling you, uh, it may sound very different, very weird, but what you're doing is very important is you are separating your sensory experience of your bodily existence and cultivating a spiritual awakening within yourself. And there are more than one ways to do that. There are more than one ways to do that. But if you do it in a mindful manner all the time, all the time, then you are you are bringing in the third principle in which is commonly missing because here you are like a crazy dog running, ar running around. Crazy monkey and crazy lazy dog combined together probably. So here you are where you are just running around and making things happen and probably trying to enjoy and, and fulfill your senses constantly. Either you go on a buying spring or you, you buy drinks and foods and everything, you're just keeping yourself busy. That's what you do. Is that right? It's just key. something I do for my body, something I do for my mind. I, I sleep, I eat, I do this, sexual activity, whatever it's going on, it's right here. But the moment this comes in, it transcends the limitations of how your body is performing. It evolves the light from not outside in, but inside out. And if that is the premise of your ability to, this is a better expression, okay? So if this is your body, this is your mind and this is your spirit, mind and the sensory faculties, okay, are the link to find your spiritual connection. When this mind is directed outward, it just takes your body as, as a storehouse of all its good on bad, negative, toxic experience and becomes a part of your body. When that mind is constantly drawn outward, then you don't have time to think about your own self, your spirit. I mean, if you do yoga. What yoga is, yoga is aligning, yoga simply means union, isn't it? Union of what? Union of your individual spirit with the cosmic spirit. Individual breath with a cosmic breath. Individual mind with a cosmic mind. So when you stop this process of your mind constantly feeding your body with, with food, experiences, everything, you allow that mind to go inward and then the body is not governed from the mind, but the body is governed by the spiritual experience. And because of the spiritual experiences happening in your body, you enliven even more elevated or higher states of consciousness. If you have read Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, how many of you have actually heard or read about Yoga Sutras of Patanjali? 
So what it talks about is that yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyana samadhi. So yama